is God's tool for the total transformation of one's destiny. Get ready to encounter truth as you listen to this timely message by God's veritable servant, Prophet Eric Oklu Pasley. In the book of Psalm 79, they ask God, can God furnish a table for us in the wilderness? And the Bible said that God made water to come out of the rock and gave them manna. In other words, whilst they were in the wilderness, it was impossible for them to have provision, but God made provision for them. I came to tell somebody, maybe all the things I've described about wilderness, you are going through them. But today, God has a different story for you. I don't like your amen. You see, don't allow circumstances to classify you. When you allow circumstances to classify you, automatically those circumstances will define you. They will redefine your life. One of the things you, you should know about life is that whatever you are going through is temporal. Yeah, it's temporal. I don't care how bad the situation is. I don't care how long you have been crying. But get this at the back of your mind that it is temporal because everything has an expiring date. Let me, I prophesy to somebody. Listen, listen. Even the suit I am wearing now, seven years to come, this suit will be irrelevant because there will be more discoveries and there will be more parties and there will be more uh, 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 style of suit. That Why don't you wear your 1980s, 40s? If you wear it here, people will laugh at you. Because it's at an aspiring date. Everything has an aspiring date. The water you drink has an aspiring date. That is why when water goes beyond a certain point, it begins to smell. So whatever situation you are going through, ladies and gentlemen, let the devil not deceive you. That will not be your end. of you know that major players in the Bible encountered, encountered wells in the Bible. Major players in the Bible. Major players in the Bible met their wives at the well. God gave, listen, the fact that they were crying and they thought that all has ended and they felt that it was time to die means that there was no water anywhere there was no water anywhere but when God showed up there was water available listen to me one of the things I've realized about God is that anytime there is a wilderness and desert situation God is able to make provision how did bread multiply? Bread multiplied when people gathered at the wilderness and, and at the desert to hear Jesus speak. That was how bread multiplied. I came to prophesy to somebody that your well is printing up today. I don't like your amen at all. I don't like your amen at all. Don't, like, don't let the troubles you are going through define you. Let them not compartmentalize you. Whatever you are going through, you can come out of it. What fire you are going through, you can come out of it. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. Within these seven days, your testimony will happen in the heaven. I prophesy to hundred people here that within seven days, you are a testimony about to manifest. A wilderness situation. I don't care how long you have gone through it. You have gone through it for seven years. You have gone through it for ten years. I came to prophesy. You see, no matter how difficult a pregnancy is for a woman, after the day she pushes and the baby comes, she forgets all the pain. I came to prophesy to somebody that in 24 hours, in 72 hours, in 48 hours, your miracle will enter your hands. A wilderness, a well. Wells represent life, prosperity, and abundance. Wells also represent the spirit in the Bible. 
What are some of the wells we can find in the Bible? Number one, the one of the wells you can find in the Bible is the grace of God. The grace of God is a well that believers can assess. The size of grace is the size of God. Grace is the manufacturer of great destiny. Great grace is the architect of great destinies. Paul says something, he said, I am what I am by the grace of God. I came to tell somebody here today, grace is available. Paul was going through the wilderness. He said there was a major messenger that was put in my flesh. But God lifted up his voice and said, Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. There is a well you must drink from, and that is the well of the grace of God. The grace of God is what compensates for our limitation. The grace of God is what makes God forget the past of a man and hold his hands to fulfill destiny. It's a well we must drink from. I don't care what you have done in the past. Refuse to allow the devil to remind you of the past. The past is the past. Those that look at the past and dress the past can never enter their future. But those that look at the past and forget the past and refuse to dress the past will enter into their future. I came to prophesy to somebody the grace of God is about to lift you out of that situation. Grace is a well we must drink from. It's a well we must drink from. When that adulterous woman met Jesus Christ and drank from that well, Jesus Christ made a statement. He said, those of you that have not committed any sin, stone here. And the people left. He said, I don't condemn you. I came to prophesy. You need to drink from that grace. You need, you need, listen, grace is the maker of men in the kingdom. Grace is what makes great in the kingdom. In the kingdom, it's not according, it's not to you according to your size. It's not of him that will live or him that run it, but it is of God that showed mercy. Listen, let me tell you something. I have worked in the bank before, and all of our biggest clients they don't know how to sign a signature. I know one particular allergy. He doesn't know how to sign. He only uses stamp print. But he's rich basa. When he enters the bank, he doesn't wear suit. He doesn't even wear trousers. He wears that Muslim mocks, long one, and wears slippers. Whether he has bought that money or not, I don't know. But what I know is that when he enters the banking hall, the environment change. Because the perfume and the body scent has mixed together. But when he enters the banking hall, you see people queue, but he will not, he will not queue. And you see masters and first degree holders wake up from their desk and they rush to him. Bring him chair. Anything he wants to drink, if you don't have it, you look for it. If you want to say, Johnny Walker, you go and look for it. If you don't look for it, you'll be fired. Whether you are a Christian or not, it doesn't apply there. When they are picking money from the back of his boot, university degrees holders, they are picking it. They push it with all the tie and the suits. And the man is sitting down and taking Johnny Walker. I have come to realize that you can never go far without the grace of God. I have come to realize that the grace of God is our sufficiency. I have come to realize it's a world you must drink from. It's a world you must drink from. And grace is the almightiness of God invading the helplessness of man. Grace is not something you work for. It's something you assess. I don't know whether I'm preaching. It's a world you must drink from. Those are some of the wells we must drink from. Healing is a well we must drink from. By his stripes, you are healed. So there is a well of healing that if you are in the wilderness of sickness, you can drink from that well. I came to prophesy to somebody, no matter what your sickness is called, after today, it has been uprooted. I don't like your amen. It has been uprooted. 
Another thing well you can drink from is the goodness of God. I think I preach on this one. As I, I, I preach on this one before. I said the, the totality of all theology is the goodness of God. <laughs> oh, that's what David said. He said, taste and see that the Lord is good. I came to tell somebody, if life has not been good to you, eh, drink from the well of God's goodness. I came to tell somebody, you might have gone through fire, he must have taken you through water, but his goodness is bringing you to your worthy place. I came to prophesy to somebody, many are there that say there is no hope for you, but I see God as the lifter up and the glory of your head. I came to prophesy to somebody, they abandoned you and they left you, but the goodness of God is visiting you. My God is visiting you. If you believe in shout, yes! goodness of God is what will make God bypass a million people just to locate you. I came to prophesy to someone, it is a river you must drink from. Sometimes when you are going through the wilderness, preach to yourself. Tell somebody, I know, I know I'm in the wilderness, but even in the wilderness, he furnishes a table in the wilderness. Even in the wilderness, this wilderness is my enemy, but my God prepares a table before me. Even in the presence of my enemies, I came to prophesy to somebody, you are coming out of that wilderness. You are coming out of that situation. Your testimony is happening, and it's happening now. The goodness of God. The goodness of God. The goodness of God. It's a well you can drink from. Ah, I feel like preaching this thing. Sir, the love of God is also a well you can drink from. One day I was evangelizing. I told the Muslim guy, I said, God is not angry with you. He said, it's not true. I said, it's true. I said, the only time God will be angry with you is when the trumpet sounds and you refuse to accept what he did for you but as long as the trumpet has no sound God is not angry for you angry with you because any time God sits down he looks at the blood he looks at what the son has done and what the son has done is making him wait patiently for people to come to Christ the love of God God doesn't have love God is love <laughs> in him there is no darkness at all Maybe you are giving birth to, you don't even know who your parents are. You don't know what love is, but you have a father that is love. You can drink from the, the well of love, ladies and gentlemen, and you will never feel abandoned in life again. I don't, I, I don't, listen, listen, it's not the love of your husband you need. Because a man can never love. The man, a man can never love a woman if he doesn't know what the love of God is. I know I'm preaching. Love is a well you can drink from. Because love is the summation of the law. It's the totality. It's the summary of everything. It was love that ejected God, Jesus Christ, from the bosom of the Father to come and die for man. You can drink from that love. You can drink from that well. When you know very well that you are going through the wilderness, but God loves me enough and makes you believe that you can't die this way because God loves me too much to allow me to go this way, to end up this way. I came to prophesy to somebody, the love of God is rescuing you right now. I don't like your amen at all. Listen, listen. Let people run ahead of you. Let them go ahead of you. They are married, you are not married. Let them even look at you and make mockery of you. It doesn't matter. It's not about getting married, it's about staying married. That is the issue. And the day you get married, it will be in grand style. Today, I'm not praying for anybody that your enemies will die. Your enemies will leave. They will live and see the testimony God will put in your mouth. 
I feel like preaching. One day David lifted up his voice and said, the Lord has put a new song in my mouth. A song of deliverance. I came to tell somebody, God is putting a song in your mouth. It doesn't matter how, how hard it has been. You have been pressed on every side. You have been squeezed. You have, you have been fought. But your testimony is coming out. Your sweetness is coming out. Your next level is coming out. Somebody shout, yeah! I preach it. There are wells we can drink from. Yeah. Listen. You can even drink from the well of the Holy Ghost. I was preaching somewhere, sir. I said, every Christian does not need a law that says, does not need a law or a policeman to make him do the right thing. I said, what will make a Christian see red light and drive inside it is because the person doesn't have the fruit of the spirit. Because if the person has the fruit of the spirit, that is the Holy Ghost inside him, he will automatically be patient. So every Christian is elevated be beyond human laws. The Holy Ghost, you can drink from the Holy Ghost. I don't know about you, but sometimes I come to a crossroad. And then I, I, I go into my prayer closet, then look for the well of the Holy Ghost. Mandosha, Zubahata, Zokataha. What are you saying, Lord? Mambrahata. Then my spirit will begin to download solution. He said, anybody that speaks in an unknown tongues speaks mysteries. Let me tell you something. The Father initiated creation. The Son came to rescue man from sin. The Holy Ghost, the assignment of the Holy Ghost is to come and execute the will of the Son. That's why the Bible says that a will is never in, in force until the one that wrote the will, the, the, state, is it, the, the one that wrote the will has died. So when Jesus Christ died, his work was finished. The next person to continue the work is the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you something. I, I, I think I've said it here before. Jesus Christ described the mission of the Holy Ghost. He said the Holy Ghost, he's called the comforter. When you hear the word comforter, he has declared the mission of the Holy Ghost. And what is the mission of the Holy Ghost? To make people's life comfortable. That's why he's called the comforter. I prophesy. How many of you have read in the book of I think Isaiah, where the Bible says that when the spirit comes, he's able to convert the wilderness to a fruitful land. Charlie, drink from the Holy Ghost. Eh? People who preach against tongues. Charlie, tongues talk in the street. Oh. Ah, ah. Holy Ghost. That's why your Holy Ghost is your eternal helper. So when you are praying, eh, Jesus Christ, come and help me. No, he will not come. Because he is already here. In the form of the Holy Ghost to help you. So I've given you certain wells we can drink from. There are a lot of them, but I've given you certain wells. You can drink from the well of the power of God. Now go on to me. The Bible said that God has spoken two things have I heard. That all power belongs to God. Look, the devil is a fear man. Do you know that the devil knew that if he had come to Adam, Adam in the garden, Adam would have dealt with him. Because Adam was, was a God man. That is why the devil had to come to Eve and not even speak the thing and use tricks. The power of God. Which fetish priest can look at you and say, you will not live? What is that? You see fetish priest that you are afraid. If you know any fetish priest, eh, let him come and put money in the bowl. And the money should be $10,000. I'll take it. I'll take it and I'll go and chop it. And I'll still live. Because all power belongs to God. When you drink from that well, you become spiritually arrogant. 
anybody that issue a deadline that person is dead some of you were here some I, I, I don't last year I gave a prophecy to you to one guy one girl they, they were married and they were staying in their sister's house and they came to my prophetic service to see what killed the sister from London I don't know whether some of you understand, saw that incident. And when I prophesied, I said, I don't want to tell you. They said, I should tell you. Then my pastor said, okay, Eric, say it. When the sister was in London, he was sending money to the brother to, to build the house. The brother started building the house in the name, in his own name. So when he had finished the house and the sister came from London, he killed the sister. So I mentioned the guy's name here at this prophetic service. When the guys went home, they went and confronted the man. And the man gave them a deadline. He said, that prophet that revealed to you, if he wakes up the following day. And this is the word the man used. Then I am not powerful. I remember that day I was sitting in my hall. across my legs and I was listening to Reverend Eastwood on KICC -K TV and he was preaching and I saw my phone, phone I picked up the call it was this man that I had prophesied to I don't know how he even got my number he said prophet Eric uh, I've confronted my my brother he has said that if you are powerful uh, 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 you can't wake up so start praying <laughs> and I laughed I laughed uh, I said, young man, the devil cannot give me prayer topic. I said, okay, but nevertheless, the boundary lines have been drawn. The boundary lines has been drawn. The boundary lines have been drawn. Now, the two of us, one must wake up. That's what I told the guy. The two of us, one must wake up. And it's going to be me. And immediately I said that. I said, thank you very much. I think I need to sleep now. Because I don't want to sit so that the words will be vibrating in my mind. Then I'll, I'll feel like speaking in tongues. And I went to sleep. The following day, I was going about my normal activity. 10, around 10, I had a text message on my phone. What is it? The man never woke up. Yeah. Some of you were here when they sent me to court. How many of you? you I, I went to court for a prophecy I gave. We hope you have been blessed by this timely message. Make a date with us this and every Wednesday, 9 a.m. at the Living Fountain Baptist Church, Teshinongwa, near Fertilizer Factory. You can follow us on Facebook and YouTube at Prophet Eric O. Pasley and on Instagram at Prophet Eric underscore O underscore Pasley. Or you can call us on 054-714-120. See you in church.
word is God's tool for the total transformation of one's destiny. Get ready to encounter truth as you listen to this timely message by God's veritable servant, Prophet Eric Oklu Pasley. When the case was thrown out, I think I gave you the testimony of how the case was thrown out. When the man saw me outside, when we were going, I was going with the lawyer. The lawyer, I didn't pay five CDs to the lawyer. I used prophecy to buy the lawyer. When I, we met the man at the gate, I met the man at the gate. And the man, the man was smiling and laughing. Then we threw the case anyway. The man was smiling and laughing. And I said, sir, for you bringing me here and denying that what I said is true, within 14 days if you don't confess you are a dead man as I talk to you the man is dead there is power available you can drink from it's not it's not everybody that is carryable I went to preach in Kumase, two women, before I entered the auditorium, two women looked at me. They said something. They said, do you have balls? How do you call balls in tree? That means that, yeah, balls or whatever. That means that, do, do you carry enough power to preach in this church? How for the pastor, they have, I met whole grand of super life better. Hey, I'm waiting. I'm that day I went to the church I preached I was preaching my ears and there was not coming hey <laughs> and where I'm coming from to we, we preach well and me part this I can't preach I said no this one is not preaching I said everybody stand up I said lift up your hands I didn't even raise a prayer topic I started Mando Shataha Zubra Hunter 15 minutes I was, pre- I was speaking in tongues then I started with prophecy. Within five minutes, I saw the two women. They left the place. There is power to drink from. It's a world you must drink from. Don't let anybody intimidate you. You can carry enough power to displace the devil. One day, by the grace of God, I walk into a hotel. Something flight out of the hotel. The guy taking my back into the hotel, he ran away. One day, I heard Reverend Stu say something. He said, he went to preach in London. I think you were there. He went to preach in London. He was autographing the book. And when he was autographing the book, a woman came with nails and something. And then his heart beat. He said, when we went to the hotel, the woman came appeared in the hotel from nowhere. The Reverend Isu said, you know Reverend Isu, when he's preaching and power, he gets tired. He said, you know what? I am tired. And I can't engage in spiritual warfare with you now. I can't be fighting with you. He said, I'm going to sleep. If you finish watching over me, then you go. from the water of power he said behold I give unto you power to trample over snakes and scorpions I prophesy every satanic snake and scorpion in your life today they die by fire I don't like your amen at all they die by fire Some, some, some demonic entities must be displayed. Some demonic entities must be displayed in Ghana for them to know that we carry the power. We are the custodians of power. I prophesy over your life. Anything that has taken over your family, that is not the power of God. I command them overthrown. In the name of Jesus. I don't like your amen at all. I command them overthrown. A witch, a witch are all two. It is also now two, two, uda, two. 
When you sleep and you dream and you are your hometown, what to? It's only that you have decided to sleep and to. So you don't need to worry yourself about a witch. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. Any witch that is alive in your life, today in 24 hours, they are dead. Any witch in your family, sitting on your advancement, sitting on your greatness, sitting on your moving forward, sitting on your marriage, I declare them dead. Oh, I feel like preaching this thing. There is nothing more disheartening than to be going through the wilderness and the wilderness will be infested with snakes and scorpions. It's very painful. You can be going through a wilderness and that wilderness will be infected with snakes and scorpions. I prophesy there is power to drink from. Yeah. There is power to drink from. Listen, if you don't carry power, you can be a victim. You can die anyhow. Because we live in a very wicked world. If I tell you, eh, eh, it has even happened before here. There was one time I was laying hands. I was laying hands and doing impartations and laying hands. And then I lay, I lay hands on somebody. I saw that the hair was not a hair, but it was a snake. So I made five people pass and I made a statement that if anybody came here to try me, how many of you remember? I am not playing games here. If you don't care, there was a guy who was preaching a sir. He was preaching. A witch grab blew air. He tore his bubble and began to eat. There was one day T.L. Osborne was preaching. A man, an occultic man, had a rod. When they stretch the rod at you, you fall down and die. When he stretched the rod at T.L. Osborne, the rod broke into two. Whilst T.L. Osborne was preaching, the man ran down and kneeled down. I want to receive Christ. I prophesy. I prophesy over your life. You shall walk in power. I say you shall walk in power. Where Kumasi, where Kumasi, I think you were there. I was there with Mr. Mensa. I gave a prophecy about a young man. I was just about closing the service and I gave a prophecy about a young man. I said, I, I, I see darkness all over you because I see some spirit of death that I am projecting against you. I said, in the name of Jesus, let the grace of God upon my life work for you. The guy went home. I gave him some detailed prophet, prophecy. The father called him over the phone. And was talking to him over the phone. Not knowing, in the family, they sacrificed people to appeal the cause. And the people they sacrifice are people that carry future. So it was the father's turn, and the father decided to sacrifice that young man. But when that prophetic word came, the father was talking to him over the phone. But as the father was talking to him over the phone, they were doing projection. You were projecting the witchcraft against the young man. But when he was talking with the father, all of a sudden, when he got to a place where they did the projection, the line dropped. And according to the young man, he said he fell asleep. He said immediately the line dropped. He fell asleep. Two days after, when I was still in Kumasi, they called him to come to the house. They said, come, we beg you, it's an emergency. And you know, Kumasi and their hometown is not far. You know, they come from this Eija. Uh, uh, Formina, Formina, the guy is from Formina. He went to his hometown. When he entered the city, everybody that saw him began to greet him. They began to salute him. Salute him. So he was wondering what was happening. Now, when he entered his father's room, he saw that in the hall, 
the elders of the town has gathered except the chief the linguist was there everybody has gathered and when he entered all the elders stood so he said what is the problem they said the fetish priest of the land is confessing that you should come and pray for him this is what the testimony that happened the time the fetish priest wanted to do the projection according to the fetish priest an invisible hand broke the, the shrine it hit the shrine you see the way thunder can strike and slide the thunder strike and the shrine broke into two and the fetish priest began to power i prophesy 2016 you shall never die in an accident i prophesy 2016 your children shall never die your vision shall never die your career shall never die shout yeah can drink from them there are wells of prosperity there are wells of wisdom you can drink from them a well in the wilderness what does it mean number one a well in the wilderness what does it mean number one supply in the means of scarcity supply in the means of scarcity when there is scarcity you are in the wilderness because the wilderness is a place of scarcity but when a well springs forth in the wilderness, you have supply in the midst of scarcity. I came to prophesy to somebody that your supply level will increase 2016. Can I prophesy to 50 people? Everything you wear in 2016, you shall receive as a gift. I don't like your amen. I have started prophesying. Everything you wear, everything including shoes, anything you wear, you shall receive as a gift. Supply. In the midst of scarcity. Supply. In the midst of scarcity. Somebody shout, yeah! supply in the midst of scarcity Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 7 I read that scripture very fast <coughs> then we'll pray for the Lord thy God has blessed thee in all the works of thy hand he know where they are walking through this great wilderness these 40 years the Lord thy God has been with thee and thou lackest nothing. You can be going through the wilderness and not lack anything. I came to tell somebody. I came to tell somebody. There is going to be supply in the midst of scarcity. 2016, I prophesy no matter how the economy of the world will be, no matter how much the dollar is falling, no matter how things are bad, you shall be an exemption. You shall have supply. Supply of energy. Supply of good health. Supply of provision. Supply of everything you need. In the name of Jesus, somebody receive your miracle job. Receive your miracle baby. Receive your house. Receive your car. Receive that business idea. Somebody shout yeah. I prophesied to two pastors under the sound of my voice. 2016, you shall experience supply of church members. You shall experience supply of church members. I don't like your amen. 
I don't like your amen. Supply in the midst of scarcity. Number two, what does a well in the wilderness mean? Number two, provision in the face of frustration. Provision in the face of frustration. Number three, miracles in the face of difficulties. Miracles in the face of difficulties. 2016, what they call a difficulty, what the doctors have called a difficulty, your miracle will come out of it. Can I tell you something? Yesterday, I said something, last week, I said something in person. When I was preaching on God is your alpha, I said something in person. I said, the same electrical problem in your house that gives you a sleepless night and gives you a headache is the joy of the electrician. Ah, should that happen? Now, let me tell it the other way around. What you call a difficulty in your life is the joy of God. Because that difficulty will make his glory be revealed. That difficulty makes you understand that as a human being you are limited in life. But God is never limited. Ah, I, hear, I hear five people. 2016. You are receiving promotion two times. You don't, you don't, I don't hear your amen at all. I just received that word in my spirit. 2016, you will receive promotion two times. Promotion two times. Number four, what is a well in the wilderness? A well in the wilderness is potential in the means of problems. Potentials in the means of problems. Number, number five, hope in the face of hopelessness. When you are going through the wilderness and there is no word, hope. Oh, a tree, when it is cut, can he, can eat? He said, yeah, it can at the scent of water. Hope in the midst of hopelessness. Haggai's hope was lost. But when the well was there, hope came. Hope came. Hope came. Number six, intervention in the means of affliction. I don't know feeling thirsty and there is no water to drink. I don't know what you want to call it. It's an, it's an affliction you shouldn't go through. I come back to me I said, It's not a good experience at all. You can live in days and not eat. Yeah. Some people don't fast, but they don't eat. Me, I know I will never grow fat because I don't like eating. I like drinking that's eating. Not getting drunk. Some of you are saying, ah, this prophet says he likes drinking. Then I, I need to drink. If he drinks, then I need to drink not alcohol now let me give you some wisdom behind the well okay in the case of Hannah then we pray wisdom behind the well number one the well became a solution for an instant problem when you go through wilderness and God makes a well available for you and I've given you all the wells and what what the wells means it becomes a solution to an instant problem. Are you here with me? In other words, you are going through some financial difficulty. Somebody shows up as a well and bails you up, out. It becomes a solution for an, an, an instant problem. Number two. The well signifies a supply that is continuous. Listen to me. The well there, if Hagar decides to leave the place, the well will still be there. And the water from the well will be continuous. So any group of people that are even stranded because of Haggai's miracle will, uh, will have supply because there will be water there and the well will be there continuously. Are you here with me? Bible history has it that all majority of all the wells in the Bible still exist today. 
So supply that is continuous. Are you here with me? Number three, wisdom of the world is that it becomes a source for future possibilities. It becomes a source for future possibilities. Now, what are possibilities? If Hannah decides to have uh, what, what people have. When I, when I was going to school, they had these gardeners all over the place. They, they, they do uh, uh, lettuce and cabbage and things like that. If Hannah decides to do that in the wilderness, there will be water. So out of that world, there are various possibilities that can come. If he gets instrument, he can produce a water company there. Yeah, because he has water. He only needs things to purify the water and make it pure water. So then, there, there are a lot of possibilities. There are a lot of business opportunities that can come out of that water. As a matter of fact, she can decide to sit by the water and sell the water to, to people that are working in the wilderness and they are testing. So the point I'm trying to make is that sometimes when God gives you a well, the well becomes a source of future possibilities. God can give you one idea that will open several doors for you. One of the richest politicians in Ghana is Park Wese Indu. The guy is stupidly rich. I think he, he has over 14 companies. One of the best in, uh, 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 financial analysts and writers I know is in his company, Goko Security. The man is there. He writes in Business and Financial Times. The man writes from there. He has hotels. He has all kinds of companies. I, I hear he's even bringing some companies. I was shocked. I have a friend that is working with uh, Goko Security. That is, he has given a business proposal to to Panyo a particular thing. When I read the business proposal, I said, "But Panyo or our dream power." He has a lot of sense. The only problem is that it's not sense he used to rule Ghana. But even if you have sense, Ghana Ghanaians will make you senseless. source for future possibilities number four it becomes a system for endless productivity okay you will not see all these things in the text until God shows you the world becomes a system for endless productivity in other words if the Bible said that Hagar decided to stay in that place the child grew in that place, stayed in that place, and looked for an Egyptian for the child to come and marry. Do you know the distance between Egypt and the wilderness of Bathsheba? So, now if Hannah wakes up in the morning, she has something to do. So there is productivity. That is what God will do to somebody today. What I'm trying to say is that the wilderness you are going through, God is not just interested in giving you a shirt. But God is interested in giving you something that will affect you, affect the generations after you, and affect your children's children. God is not just interested in putting money in your hands. Because you see, that is why I said that the world is a solution to an instant problem. Money can come into your hands and it will pay your rent. That is an instant problem. But for you not to be in that problem all the time, you need something that must be going. Are you ready to pray? And what is the key to the world in the wilderness? Hunger 
desperation and desperation. Hunger and desperation. Are you ready to pray? I know somebody is about to drink from a well. As never before. God is about to give you a business idea. Let me tell you something. I've told you here several times that one of the prayer I pray for you, my ch the church, uh, the church I am a member of, one of the prayer I pray is for people to prosper. Okay, I pray that prayer. God has assured me. He said, "Son, I will bless my people, and they will carry substance in my hands." I never asked God how he was going to do it until about a week and a half ago I was praying and I heard a clear statement from God he said son what you have prayed about all these years I am about to give two people and he mentioned the name of the people for me business idea that will change their lives forever I prophesy. May you have a well in your wilderness. I don't like your amen. May you have a well in your wilderness. Are you ready to pray?